Welcome to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Shan Stout with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. And I'm Jonathan Frank with Tennessee Tech University. Jonathan, today's guests are two Cookville staples. We have Tennessee Tech Professor of Music and Bryan Symphony Orchestra Music Director Dan Alcott and Tennessee Tech alum and editor of the Herald Citizen, the lovely Lindsay Pride. Yeah, they were both really great guests. Two people that have been on my uh, podcast guest wish list for a while. Uh, you know, Professor Alcott, uh, he's going to make you all want to sing and dance, talking about everything that's happening with the 60th season of the Bryan Symphony Orchestra. And Lindsay uh, really has such an important job keeping us all informed, making us more knowledgeable about the great things happening here in Cookville uh, with her role at the Herald Citizen. I love to hear their perspective on their gratitude toward how tech impacted their lives. Each gave a very profound yet distinct difference in their answers. Yeah, they really did. Lindsay came at it from the perspective of being a tech alumna, talking about the foundation that tech provided to get her started in her career and now the the news value that it provides in her role uh, with the Herald Citizen. And then Professor Alcott coming at it from the perspective of a faculty member who also shared some interesting reflections about how the community really welcomed uh, his family when they moved here to Cookville from out of state. I've found that fascinating. So let's get to those interviews today. And up first, our guest is Tennessee Tech professor in the School of Music, director of orchestral activities at Tech, and the music director of the Bryan Symphony Orchestra, now in its 60th season, Professor Dan Alcott. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We're now joined by Tennessee Tech professor Dan Alcott. Professor Alcott is a man who wears many, many hats here in Tennessee's college town. In addition to his more than 20 years of teaching in Tech School of Music, which is amazing enough, Professor Alcott is the music director of Cookville's own Bryan Symphony Orchestra and serves as the director of orchestral activities at Tennessee Tech. He is a renowned conductor and accomplished cellist. Professor Alcott also concluded both a 12-year run as a music director of the Oak Ridge Symphony and a term as faculty trustee on Tennessee Tech's Board of Trustees. Professor Alcott, welcome to College Town Talk. Well, it's great to be here. Now, Professor, the Bryan Symphony Orchestra, where you serve as the music director, is celebrating a very big milestone all year long. This is their 60th season. So we're gonna call it the BSO. It's such a beloved part of our community. What does this anniversary mean specifically to you? And can you tell us more about the unique partnership between the community and Tennessee Tech that makes this beautiful music possible for us? Well, as far as the 60th anniversary goes, it's, um, it's a reminder of the wonderful footprint that people put down early in our community. Many of us now are, are following and developing things that were importantly laid for us by an earlier generation. So in this case, um, the um, Bryan Symphony Orchestra Guild, uh, which was um, mainly a lot of um, faculty wives who came to Cookville when Cookville didn't have a lot going on, and they wanted, they were doing many things to help make this a specialty, uh, special community. And so they banded together in support of the School of Music, along with the Derryberry family, who are music fans, and, um, and said, we're going to support this. We're going to bring musicians from wherever we need to, to augment, uh, so that we can have a subscribed season, professional season uh, for an orchestra. And, you know, if you think back 60 years ago, the roads were not what they were now, but they, we still had people coming from Nashville Symphony to join us. And we still have that. We have players from all over the um, middle Tennessee and East Tennessee who join us to augment the faculty and students who perform uh, alongside them. So that's a really neat um, thing that they put down. And I feel very responsible in taking that over. Bryan Symphony Orchestra Association works in partnership with the School of Music at Tennessee Tech to raise over $250,000 annually in support of these concerts. 
through subscription sales, fundraising, and grants. And it's really a valuable and um, an attractive thing for faculty. And when we're hiring new faculty, that I'm like, and you know, they're automatically the principal player in a section in a professional orchestra with six concerts a year. So, but the real, um, the best part of it is the students. And many of the students, it's when they're gone that they get back to me and they say, I didn't realize what a great opportunity that was to sit next to my professor in a professional orchestra and then come to my professional life or graduate school and just have all this experience that so many people didn't have. And I got it because I was at Tennessee Tech. Well, Professor Alcott, we can't talk about this uh, milestone anniversary for the Bryan Symphony Orchestra without talking about uh, an anniversary of your own. You just marked more than 20 years of service to Tennessee Tech. And uh, you and I have spoken before. You've shared how you're now even teaching some of the, the children of your former students, which I think is pretty cool. So I know it's impossible to sum up 20 years in, in the span of, of an interview like this. But uh, when you look back on your time at Tennessee Tech, can you uh, give us a few of the highlights? Well, there have been many, many special moments um, with the Bryan Symphony and my colleagues and students. But I think one of the um, big things that I've enjoyed doing, and as a part of my training, um, I learned to be to conduct opera and symphonies and ballets. And so we've brought many live opera performances to our audience. And several of those were part of a collaboration we had where I was principal guest conductor for Asheville Lyric Opera for several years. So I would do a performance there and then bring the cast over here. And we did a performance for their 10th anniversary of Puccini's Tosca, which is a major work that um, sometimes even surprises me that I got to, that I really got to do it. It's definitely a bucket list item. And um, so it was great for our students to be, to hear these wonderful singers and sing alongside of them and play. But also it's great because when I bring the cast from Asheville Lyric Opera, they would always say, wow, your orchestra is fantastic. And I think, you know, on a personal level, my mother, um, just a few weeks before she passed away, came to a performance of Verdi's Requiem um, that we performed. And so there's not a lot of people who get to kind of pre-eulogize their mother <laughs> in this beautiful work that is meant to, as a piece of, of uh, remembrance for. So that's kind of a, a more personal uh, memory, which was really um, special to me. Now, Professor Alcott, one of the things that is so great about you and the BSO is how you're always paying it forward and that attitude of finding new ways to engage our community with an appreciation for the arts. Now, I know that one of the ways you do that is through your annual education concerts for fourth graders in the Upper Cumberland. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about that if they're not familiar with this wonderful pay it forward opportunity? Well, um, when I first arrived here, there was not an education concert taking place. There had been some in the past. And um, so what we developed was um, I targeted fourth graders and we developed a curricular education concert. So we work to meet state standards of music education during those concerts. And we always have a teacher who collaborates with us to create pre-concert materials. That way, it's not a field trip that people can opt in or out of. It is a curricular um, fulfillment that they get to take part in. So we started off with just Putnam County Schools. Um, and now we are up to, I think, five counties in the Upper Cumberland. We have 2,500 fourth graders come on to the campus of Tennessee Tech as a part of this uh, concert. And I'm always proud to say that the School of Music has probably brought 30,000 fourth graders and their teachers uh, onto the campus every year. And I'm not sure anybody else can say that they get 2,500 captured, 2,500 fourth graders who can say, I've been on the campus of Tennessee Tech every year. And we see some of those students, of course, coming here. And I love having the fact that they they and their teachers gain some comfort with the university environment, but also that we get to have a really, really fun education concert with them. That's a phenomenal opportunity for them. Thank you for your work there. Well, Professor Alcott, in addition to all of your work with the arts in our community, I know you also just completed the term as the representative for the entire Tennessee Tech faculty on the Board of Trustees. 
And for our listeners that don't know, uh, and, and you can tell me if I'm getting this right, the Board of Trustees has one rotating faculty member serving a two-year term, and they are really the voice of uh, em employees of the university on the board. So what was that experience like for you, and what made you want to say yes to that role? Well, first of all, I want to thank my peers who elected me, the Faculty Senate elected me to represent um, the campus, basically, not just them, but also students, and to give that perspective. Um, because I um, have, I started in the professional world, the nonprofit world, before I came to uh, university work, I've been serving on boards since about 1990 or so, um, and so I'm very familiar with board processes and um, also with parliamentary procedure. And I actually like the way board meetings work or the way they're supposed to work, which is a thorough um, examination of issues and um, accountable um, accountability in dealing with those issues. So for me, it was just an honor to bring the campus perspective to many discussions. I hope to think that maybe I moved the needle on a couple of issues. And also sometimes when, you know, look, all everybody else is, uh, other than the student representative who's not a voting representative, um, everybody else is appointed by the governor. So there's a chance that I may have been, uh, had a different perspective than a lot of the people uh, who were there, most of whom did not have an academic background. And sometimes that's just the necessity of being the person in the room who um, presents that other um, outside perspective and I'm very comfortable in that role. Now my favorite part of the interview is coming up because finally we like to end each interview with the same question and I always appreciate the differences in the answers. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Well we made a very conscious choice as a family to come here um, we were living in Atlanta previous uh, to this job. I was music director of Atlanta Ballet for 10 years and had a very exciting life there. But we were, my wife Susan and I were um, raising a young family and we were looking for um, some opportunities for me to do a more broad um, spate of things. So I'm a, a cellist and this job opportunity came up where, you know, it's kind of like director of orchestras. We'd prefer if you could also teach cello or low string instrument. And so it was the one job I applied for that year. I was not really looking for a job. And that's the best way to look for a job, by the way, when you're not just desperately seeking, you know, some kind of employment. And when they offered me the job, I said, okay, I'm coming up with my family first and we're going to interview Cookville. And so we drove up uh, my wife and my two young children, and we uh, we have a special needs child, so we actually had an interview with some special education teachers. And I said, um, my wife and I said, we think this can be a place where we'll be comfortable, we can contribute, and that we're going to be in a community that will take care of us. And so we really feel like that has happened. We both have been able to um, make contributions. My wife started the Cookville Children's Museum. Um, my daughter was editor of the high school paper. My son is very active with the special needs community and some sports things. And we've met a whole group of friends there. So I feel like Cookville has paid back on our investment. And, um, you know, all changes in life come with risk. And we feel like it's been a, a, a we made a really good decision um, and it's paid off. Well, I agree on the fact that Cookville has benefited from the impact of your family being here. And the evidence is seen all around us in the elevated culture and exposure that our students and just our community have been able to experience because of your talent and all of your hard work uh, giving back to us. So we appreciate it. Uh, Professor Alcott, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Well, I'm happy to be here, and I really enjoy this series, and I, I hope people are um, learning more and more about what makes this Tennessee's college town. And for our listeners, learn more about the Bryan Symphony Orchestra at bryansymphony.org, and check out the School of Music at Tennessee Tech at tntech.edu slash music. Welcome back to College Town Talk. 
We are now joined by the storyteller, fact checker, scoop getter, and receipts keeper of Tennessee's college town herself. Of course, we're talking about Tennessee Tech alumna Lindsay Pride, the editor of the Herald Citizen. Lindsay began working at the Herald Citizen in 2002, following graduation from Tech in 2000. She was named managing editor of the newspaper in October 2017, before taking over the editor role in January 2021. Under Lindsay's leadership, the Herald Citizen has earned numerous Tennessee Press Association awards, including first place in breaking news for the coverage of the March 3rd, 2020 tornado in Putnam County. Lindsay is now also a member of the board of directors for the Tennessee Press Association. Lindsay, welcome to College Town Talk. Hello, thank you for having me. Well, Lindsay, let's talk a little bit about the Herald Citizen because many of our listeners know uh, the Herald Citizen is our local newspaper, but they may not know just what a, uh, a really proud history it has. And as I understand, the Herald Citizen traces its history back to 1903. So that's 120 years ago. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And uh, maybe what, what does that legacy mean to you now that you are the one sitting in the editor's chair? Yeah, that's right. Uh, on uh, February 11th, 1903, um, that was when our our first edition, it was the Putnam County Herald, and um, it was printed by Elmer Lincoln Wirt and his son, Ralph Wirt, and they were um, using like a, a $30 piece of army equipment and a small flatbed press, and they were actually in the building across uh, from the uh, courthouse where the arcade building is now. That's where they printed the very first issue. So, um, and he was actually not from Cookville. He was, Elmer Wirt was uh, from Minnesota and uh, he and his wife had moved uh, to Cookville because she was from Georgia and her family decided to to settle here. So they they came through that Nashville and Knoxville Rail Railroad in 1894 and, and settled in Cookville. And he had had some previous experience printing and uh, publishing uh, in Minnesota, where he was from. So, um, you know, just that first edition, he wrote an editorial um, in support of reincorporating the city of Cookville. It had been unincorporated during Prohibition. And, um, and so a month later, after he wrote that editorial, the overwhelming majority of Cookville residents decided you know, yes, we do want to be a city again. And so uh, that, you know, that formation, you know, reformation of Cookville, you know, had strong ties to, to the establishment of the newspaper. And then um, there was a Cookville native named John Mott who started a weekly tabloid newspaper and it was called the Cookville Citizen. He started that in, in 1954. And then those two papers merged in 1960 and it became uh, the Herald. It was first the Herald and Citizen, but then it became the Herald Citizen uh, like it is now um, in January of 1969. So that legacy is is meaningful to me, and I feel like it's meaningful to um, a lot of Cookville residents. It's meaningful to the establishment of Tennessee Tech. Um, Elmer where it was actually um, Putnam County's representative in the Tennessee State Legislature, and he wrote the bill and helped lead the, to the effort to establish Tennessee Polytechnic Institute, which obviously you know is the forerunner to to Tennessee Tech. So. You know, this this newspaper has been here so long and had so much to do with, you know, the the other institutions that are here and have been here for such a long time. Well, Lindsay, that was an impressive answer. I can tell that you're not just a journalist, you're a historian. <laughs> so if you ever get tired of the newspaper gig, we found you a secondary career. <laughs> I love history. <laughs> I can tell it shows, but that's that's a beautiful history. It's it's a very rich history. And I love how it warrants um, the importance of news that generates change, which is, of course, what's happening um, throughout the news. I mean, that's that's part of the purpose is to to make people aware. And, and you're so good at your job. But as I look back over your career journey, it seems that you knew all along that you wanted to be doing exactly what you're doing right now. You studied journalism at Tennessee Tech. Uh, you spent some time at the Crosswell Chronicle, and then you came to the Herald Citizen not long after graduating. But at what point did you know for real you wanted to be a journalist, and what was your why for entering the profession? Um, well, I'd always been a writer. I started keeping journals when I was in third grade. I just didn't think that it could be a profession. My my parents had 
not those kind of jobs. My my dad was a post uh, a mail carrier for the U.S. Postal Service in East Nashville, and my my mom was a legal secretary in downtown Nashville. So I didn't really think about you know a career in journalism as as a job. I didn't really know anything about it, but. Um, you know, I, I came to Tennessee Tech uh, because it was actually the only school in the state that offered a music therapy degree at the time. And um, I played piano since I was the six years old. And so I knew I wanted to help people. I thought music therapy would be something I could do. Um, I, got a, I got into the program and I, I thought, no, I, I, I don't want to do this, but I still did want to help people. And so I took a career interest inventory test at the at the Tech Career Center and my top three um, interests were music and clerical work, which I definitely didn't want to do, and journalism. <laughs> so, so I took uh, Russ Witcher's Intro to Mass Communications class and I was just hooked. My first beat that I, uh, where I covered, reported on was uh, the tech radio station and I went and talked to one of the management members and they said, well, if you really want to learn what it's like you know, about the tech radio station, then you need to become a DJ. And so I became a DJ <laughs> and I learned a lot about, you know, broadcasting through that. I became the news director. Um, I worked on the, the tech, um, the Tennessee Tech Oracle. And uh, one of my first editorials was, you know, writing about the importance of the tech radio station because there was some, some funding question at the time. And one of the professors had kind of, you know, downplayed the importance of the radio station. And um, so that was my first editorial to write about, you know, the importance of WTTU. Now, of course, it's celebrated last year, just its 50th anniversary. So, um, you know, just knowing that you can, you know, have an impact, you can help people, you can educate people, um, you know, people come still come here and, you know, they want to, um, they, you know, want to highlight injustices, but, you know, we're also here to, you know, celebrate, you know, achievements and milestones and accomplishments. So, um, it's definitely nice to be part of that and part of when you see people have, you know, newspaper clippings of, you know, whenever something they've done has been in the newspaper and you see them framed and hanging on the walls of their offices or the home. So it's uh, it's really wonderful to be part of that. Well, I love that story, Lindsay. I also have uh, great memories of, of Dr. Russ Witcher's uh, classes as, as a tech student. Now, you've made a name for yourself in Cookville, but I know that you're originally from my neck of the woods in Madison, Tennessee. I'm from right next door in Goodlettsville. So can you talk a little bit about what first uh, drew you to Cookville? I mean, obviously it was to enroll at the university, but then, you know, you made the decision to, to really stay here and put down roots. So can you also talk about the changes you've seen over the last 25 years here? Um, well, like I talked about just a minute ago, it was the music therapy program at Tennessee Tech um, that drew me to Cookville. I had, I was a high school band student. So I, I did come here one summer for band camp. Um, so those were the, you know, two experiences I'd had. Um, at Tennessee Tech in Cookville. And um, and so uh, after I graduated, I wasn't sure I was going to end up here. Um, but, you know, I got the job in, at the Crossville Chronicle. My friend Heather Melanick, she was the she was working there, too, at the time and where she's now the editor there, too. But um, a, a longtime reporter, um, Mary Jo Denton, actually recruited me to, to come work at the Herald Citizen in 2002. Um, so it's just been, it's been fun to have kind of a front row seat to all of the changes, you know, you know, we've added, you know, a North Tower to our hospital, you know, Tennessee Tech has expanded, Tennessee Tech is, you know, building all kinds of buildings, we didn't always have, we didn't always have an amphitheater in Dogwood Park, so I got to be part of reporting on that, you know, where Cotton Eye Joe's is now is the, is also the expansion of, of Dogwood Park. Um, you know, when I first started, people were talking about wanting a fifth interchange in the city. And, you know, I got to watch that slowly happen and actually get to celebrate that uh, back in 2018 to actually stand on an interchange, you know, under over one of the busiest interstates in the country um, was pretty cool. I mean, you just don't see it, it takes so long for those kind of projects to happen. So we have it feels like a new business opening every day and um, and so many, you know, parks and, you know, we didn't have Cummins Falls State Park. We, you know, you would drive and park on the side of the road and take the rope ladder down when I was in college. It wasn't anything like it is now. So it's been 
it's been fun to be to be part of that and to and to help you know educate the people about what's happening here. I love everything about that. Uh, <laughs> give it so like a blast from the past. We should bring in this <laughs> podcast today, Lindsay. Uh, now, speaking of journalism, local journalism is obviously so important to strong communities, and yet we also know that journalism today faces some real challenges. One of which is sustaining and supporting our community print newspapers. Now, we saw this here in the Upper Cumberland when several of our local newspapers closed earlier this year. Fortunately, they were brought back a short time later, but the fact remains, it can be tough out there for print media. What do you make of those challenges, and what do you think gives you optimism for the future of the industry? Right. Yeah, um, just before this interview, I was listening to a story about how, you know, uh, social media is kind of driven by, um, you know, hatred and outrage and we're held to a different standard. And I think people are always going to be searching for information and looking for information that's accurate. So I feel like, you know, we, we are liable for everything that, that we publish. So if we, you know, we could be sued if something is that we publish is no, if we knowingly publish something that's what that we know is false. And so it's just not the same for social media where you can just sit behind a keyboard and write whatever you want to, and not really face any, any real, you know, consequence because of that. So I feel like, you know, especially with, with Tennessee Tech and the archives they're preserving our, you know, old editions and, and digitizing those so, so that people can search those. And, and people do are looking for, you know, looking back in our history and seeing what happened. And, and I mean, that's happening all the time. People are always contacting us for, you know, old stories. Um, you know, you can't clip out uh, pieces of, 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 of news items on Facebook the way you can, you know, with a newspaper and, and preserve those and save those. So I feel like, you know, we were just purchased by Paxton Media Group last year and they've been purchasing lots of papers and it doesn't seem like you would purchase something just to just to shut it down. So I feel, I feel you know, that that is a promising thing for us. And, um, you know, they Paxton Media Group t- traces their, you know, beginnings back to the late 1800s. So, you know, and they still are operating with fourth and fifth generation um, family is still operating that company. So I feel good about that. I feel like, um, you know, traditional media still still remains and we're still reading books. You know, everything is is available, you know, on a laptop or a computer or your smartphone. But but we still, you know, sometimes want to hold that in our hands. But however it, it turns out, I think that people will always be looking for information about their community. Finally, Lindsay, we like to end each interview with the same question, and that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Well, um, the journalism program gave me the opportunity to, I guess, try everything that I wanted to try in media. Um, you know, I, I was the managing editor of the student newspaper, and that was when we went from, you know, where you pasted up columns of individual type uh, to now where you design everything on a computer. So, um, you know, having that experience and knowing, you know, what it was like before and what what it is like now, you know, obviously that's, you know, what I do in my job. So that's very important to me. Uh, working on the Eagle Yearbook, working, you know, in, in your office, or what was your office at that time? It was, uh, I think it was called... Um, but being a student worker and sending out those press releases, you know, for students celebrating achievements like being on the honor roll or graduating. Um, so, you know, having all of that experience, I feel like um, really helped me, obviously, in my job now. And um, and it's also really fun to be, you know, living in the same town where where I went to school. And um, I think it's cool for my kids. You know, I have three kids. So, they're growing up in a college town and they they have opportunities, you know, to be close to something, you know, where, where I lived, I didn't have, you know, a college right down the street from me. So, you know, I, I love that I was able to do this, you know, um, I had internships at the Gallatin News Examiner and the Carthage Courier that, um, that my professors at Tech, you know, allowed me to do. And, um, and it's just uh, the person who really taught me so much about journalism was Hicks Stubblefield. He was a longtime professor at Tennessee Tech and, he passed away last year and he really encouraged me to apply to be managing editor of the Oracle. And, um, and he just, you know, taught me a lot about accepting criticism of my writing and becoming a better writer. And so, um, 
he just really he taught me a lot about journalism and I'm just grateful for that experience. Well, we are grateful for this experience. Lindsay, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and being our guest on College Town Talk. We appreciate it. You're welcome. And for our listeners, find the Herald Citizen online at herald-citizen.com. We want to say thanks again to Professor Dan Alcott and Lindsay Pride for taking time out of their schedules to join us today and share their thoughts with us. We definitely do. And we want to thank you, our listeners, for adding this podcast to your playlist, subscribing, reviewing, and sharing with your friends. It all helps to spread the word about the great things happening right here in Cookville. Join us again next week for more conversations with leaders on and off Tennessee Tech's campus as we talk to the people that make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.